Welcome to the NRN's first episode in a series of video blogs from farmers participating in EIP Agri projects throughout Ireland. This video blog features farmers who are participating in the 10 million euro Pearl Mussel project. Hi, my name is Mary McAndrew and I'm the catchment officer for the Freshwater Pearl Mussel project. The Freshwater Pearl Mussel project is a results-based program based in the top eight catchments in Ireland. I'm based up in the northwest, looking after the catchments in Donegal, Mayo, and two in Galway. Results-based programs are based on the scoring of habitats. The higher the score, the higher that payment. One of our catchments is in Bundaraha in County Mayo. It is the top um, freshwater pearl mussel catchment, not only in Ireland but in all of Europe. Two of our farmers who farm there is Cullum and Martin Gavin, a father and son team. They are going to now discuss with you being involved with the results-based programme and some of the supporting actions that they've availed of through the project this year. Hello, uh, my name is Colm Gavin. I'm farming here in the Bundera catchment um, in Delphi, uh, near Leenan in County Mayo. Uh, I've been farming here since 2015. I lease the farm off my uncle and I run, um, I have about 100, 100 uh, blackface, Scotch blackface yews uh, on about 110 hectares. Uh, some of that is commonage and some of that is private. Um, it's their mountainy, mountainy sheep. Uh, we outwinter all the stock and um, we kind of keep them on the hill for most of the year, uh, which kind of works quite well. I've always known about the freshwater pearl mussel uh, and I heard about the project kind of early on and kind of nearly from the get go. Uh, we'd heard about it just through people that were involved. Uh, and we found them quite good to deal with. Um, we deal with Derek and Mary pretty much, and we can see that Mary puts in quite a lot of work there. Uh, just in doing up documents, she puts an awful lot of work in there, and Derek is, is quite uh, good. He also puts in quite a bit of work, and uh, they're very easy to deal with. Um, the few things we've done, so at the moment, uh, we're in the middle of treating rhododendron. Um, it's an invasive species in this area, um, we've kind of learned how to treat it right and without causing any damage to any any other um, flora and fauna around the place. Um, so that's kind of one of the biggest issues we have here. Uh, the other thing is um, we were doing a few little bridges, like little caches, um, just for where the, the, the sheep will cross, just to make sure that there's good quality water going in. Uh, just to maintain the, the, the quality of the water. Um, so we we are kind of responsible from the top of the hill right down to the river for the water. Uh, so, you know, it's quite a big area. Uh, we want to make sure that it's it's in, in good nick by the time it gets down to the river. So the other few things we have to do, so we're going to dip. Um, we're, we used to have a dip and bath. We still have the dip and bath, but we're going to use uh, a mobile dipper so that way that um, the, there'll be no issue with getting rid of the, the dip. Um, and we are also controlling the flow of the, of the drains um, towards the, the river, just to slow down the silt and the, the bog from moving in towards the river. There's quite a, quite a lot of water here. We get three metres of rain every year. Um, so we kind of have a lot of water to deal with. So it's just about managing that and managing the quality of the water that leaves the farm here uh, as, to have it as good as possible. The biggest challenges I think we have around here um, would be our population. There's not too many of us. Um, the pearl mussel has probably more, a bigger population than what we have uh, here. And it's, we're just, I suppose, we try to encourage people to, to move into the, the area and wherever we can but it's just it's it can be a hard old sale sometimes um, life is pretty good here but it's not necessarily easy um, you're there's an awful lot of positives but sometimes people don't really enjoy the isolation as you, you have a lot of things to get used to to, to to live here and a lot of hurdles to cross uh, but I really enjoy it and I'm quite lucky to, ha to have what I have uh, in my own backyard. There'd be a lot of people who would love to have what I have. 
Hello, my name is Merton Gavin and um, I'm living here along the Bundura River. <coughs> I came here as a young lad in 1976 and uh, started a farm with my uncles. And um, uh, since that, I inherited the farm from my uncle then and um, continued to farm. And I'm farming sheep, about 200 joes and, uh, and a small number of cattle, uh, suckler cows. The biggest threats to this area, one is depopulation. Or the amount of young people um, taking up farming is worrying really, I suppose, to, at that point. Uh, and invasive species, that's another major issue that I can see uh, that we have and that is going to be a huge issue in these areas. Going on to the uh, pearl mussel, I've been aware of the pearl mussel. I've been involved, I was involved for quite a number of years in farm politics, so uh, with the IFA, I was chairman of the County Mayo um, executive of IFA, so I was very much involved uh, with the with designations and that uh, for quite uh, quite a long time, really. So I was um, well aware of the uh, pearl mussel, the funding that was there for it, and you know couldn't wait to see it getting start up and running. So uh, uh, thankfully that has taken place, and you know at least now we know that there's. Uh, a program left out there for us that I adhere to and the burden I suppose really was a great example to everybody really how the bottom up approach really is is what, uh, what worked in these areas and you know that seems to be um, a, you know quite uh, the thing here as well so look at, uh, I do while there is concerns and worries for areas like this um, you know, you'd you'd still have to keep keep the hope up, really, that um, uh, that people will take it up. Because it's not it's not it's not a livelihood for everybody. But uh, you need to be passionate about the area, I suppose. Number one, to um, to continue farming, and, uh, because really, for the you you know, in particular, young people as educated, um, the money wouldn't be the main attraction, really. So. Uh, like at the same time I think there's great quality of life here and um, looking forward to kind of uh, working with the Power Muscle Project team and see how that goes. The NRN would like to sincerely thank Cullum and Martin Gavin and the Pearl Muscle Project team for kicking off our EIP Agri Participating Farmer video blog series with such an interesting and informative insight into how this project is working on the ground and making a difference at farm level. There are 23 EIP Agri projects in Ireland, co-funded by the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine and the EU under Ireland's Rural Development Programme 2014-2020. The EIP Agri initiative was set up by the European Commission to promote innovation and foster sustainable growth within the agri-food sector and rural economy through a multi-actor approach involving farmers, researchers, advisors and agribusinesses. Information on all of Ireland's EIP Agri projects can be found on the NREP's website.